اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ الحمدللہ وصلاة والسلام على رسول اللہ وعلى آلہ الطیبین الطاہرین وعلى اصحابہ وعلى جمیع الانبیاء والمرسلین قال اللہ تعالی فی القرآن المجید والفرقان الحمید بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم یا ایوہ الناس اتقوا ربکم الذی خلقکم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وقال الله تعالى إني لا أضيع عمل عامل منكم من ذكر أو أنثى بعضكم من بعض صدق الله ولي العظيم In the name of Allah most gracious and most merciful All praise is due to our creator, our cherisher, our nourisher and our sustainer We bear witness there is none worthy of worship but Allah we bear witness, we believe in all the prophets, and we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam, is the final of all the emissaries of Allah. Respected elders, brothers and sisters, at yeah, this auspicious time of Jum'ah, in this beautiful house of Allah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. South Africa commemorates Women's Month in August and this is a tribute to thousands of women who marched onto the Union buildings in Pretoria on the 9th of August 1956 in protest against the extension of the past laws to women. And for those of us who are beyond our teens would know that the past laws require South Africans who were defined as black by the Population Registration Act of that time to carry a document called the pass, almost a kind of internal passport, which severely restricted the movements of people of color, more particularly the indigenous people. And persons who were designated who the pass, they can only be in a particular area at a particular time where they were authorized to work to live and to travel and they were required to carry this pass all the time and if they failed to carry that pass or were in areas restricted for them and to them they could have been arrested and imprisoned so that march which took place 62 years ago yesterday was led by four women and of course they gave a petition to the president or the prime minister straight on of that time at the Union buildings, and 100,000 people signed supporting this march, indicating their anger and frustration at having their freedom of movement curtailed and restricted by these hated racist laws. Among the women, the four women, one of them was Rahima Musa. This act was indeed a brave act an act that serves as one of the iconic moments in the history of our country's struggle for liberation. And to free us from the grips of the evils of racism and the apartheid system. A system that was imposed upon us. This act of courage was done by women, and when I say women, and Women's Day, which they had yesterday in the country, is a national holiday in commemoration of that event. They are those who are in our community who have the biological capacity to bear children, which we don't have at the bottom level here, the top floor has, to bring human life to the world, and those, of course, who have the potential to be in that honored position, the most honored position of potential for motherhood. Now, as Muslims, we know that all of humankind emanate from one source, as documented in Surah An-Nisa, the women, chapter 4, where Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nas, ittaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqa min nafsi wahida, wa khalaqa minha zawjaha, wa batha minhuma rijalan kathira wa nisa'a. O humankind, reverence your guardian Lord, created you from a single source and from that source the mat 
and from then from these two scattered countless human beings men and women and regarding these men and women the Quran does not set value for particular deeds between men and women in fact it states inni la minkum min untha never will Allah allow the work and the effort of anyone to suffer loss or to be ignored or to be undermined by Allah whether it be the work of a male or the female because you are members one of the other and Allah clearly tells us that we are members of one and the same human race and therefore as human beings we are equal furthermore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the very famous verse in Surah Hujrat Ya ayyuha al-nasu inna khalaqnaakum min dhakari wa untha wa ja'alnaakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum O humankind We created you from a pair of male and female and made you into nations and tribes so that you may know each other Verily the most honorable of all of you male and female of any nation or any tribe the most honorable of you in the estimation of Allah are those who are most righteous those who are most God conscious so we realize that the Quran does not privilege men over women in their biological roles or biological capacity as males or females nor does the Quran treat man as the normative and the woman as the other and though the Quran does acknowledge patriarchy or rather male responsibility it does not imply that Islam or the Quran promotes male superiority. We are a community of Iqra. Our message began with the commandment of Iqra. We are a community that emanated from that injunction which Rasul received Iqra, a community of literacy and of knowledge. And many of our knowledgeable ones among us have gained Islamic knowledge at institutions of learning that have female roots. And I want to reflect on that for a while because very often when we mention some people say you make a general statement and but you don't follow it up with specifics. Women uh, this and then you mention something in general but give us some specifics. So today I thought I would do exactly that. I'll begin with Nisa binti Hassan. Great great daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam who has such a level of scholarship that Imam al-Shafi did not study by her. After being a faqih after being recognized as a jurist in his own age who went and studied under Sayyidina Nafisa in Egypt not only that he led the Ramadan Qiyam prayer at a masjid and even before they buried him they brought his, uh, his janazah to the masjid and she prayed over it before they buried him so famous and so noteworthy is Nafisa binti Hassan the great granddaughter of the Prophet that Imam al busayri who wrote the most famous Qasida, Qasida Burda, also wrote a Qasida in praise of her and her knowledge. Sayyidah Nafisa, or as they referred to her in Egypt, Nafisa al ilm Nafisa, the knowledgeable one. Some of us have drunk a bit from the institution of Al-Azhar, located in Egypt, one of the world's oldest institutions of learning, the second oldest degree granting institution in the world founded in 970 of the Christian era and it was named after Fatima to Zahra the daughter of the Prophet but the oldest university is not Al-Azhar is the University of Karawin in Fez in Morocco and dates to 859 and is recognized by the Guinness Book of Records as the oldest degree granting university in the world and UNESCO considers al qarawin to have been a university since its founding. And not only that, great scholars of Islam in the history of, our, of those who contributed to the various sciences of Islam came from the Ibn Khaldun, who's considered the father of sociology by both the East and the West, was a student there. Pope Sylvester II, the Pope, studied there. Maimonides, the most famous Jewish scholar and faqih of the Jews, that referred to the Shafi of the Jews. Maimonides all graduated from there and this university Karawi, was founded and began by a woman called Fatima Al-Fihri in our own city in Cape Town a remarkable woman 
made land available for the building of the first mosque in South Africa. The awal masjid was built in 1794 in Dorp Street. And it stands today the awal masjid in the country, and that was donated by Sarkif and Nikab. Beyond the institutions of learning, if you glance at the illustrious life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we note the significant and cherished roles that women played at various stages of his life. When Amina binti Wahab, his mother gave birth to him, to her only child, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was Barakah who was there as the midwife to receive him in her hands. She was there when he was born. She was there when Fatima was born. She was there when Hassan and Hussein was born. And she was there when the Prophet passed away. She of all the companions was with the Prophet literally from birth to death. No other companion, including Sayyidina Ali, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, all of them, may Allah be pleased with all of them, none of them, even Sayyidina Fatima, has a distinction. She was there when he was born, she was there when he was died. So he died, she was there for the birth of each and every one of his children, and for Hassan and Hussein, his grandchildren. Baraka, Um Ayman. The first person to feed the Prophet besides his mother, his Mardi'ah, what they call Mardi'ah, was Thuwaybah. He was nursed, nurtured and nursed in his young age in the desert among the tribe of the Banu Sa'd and the lady was Halima bint Abu Dhu'ayb or Halima to Sa'adiya or Daya Halima as she's known and she nurtured him for five years returned him to his mother Amina and a year after that she passed away but while she was nurturing him the Prophet's foster sister and his playmate in childhood was Shayma, the daughter of Halima. One day when there was a battle and she was captured and she said, I want to see my brother. They said, who's my brother? Who's your brother? He said, Muhammad. And when he saw her, he got up. He said, Shayma? He said, yes. She's my sister. He said, I still got a bite mark you had on me when you made a mark on me when you were angry one day. The Prophet said, yes, I remember. Shayma, she became a poet afterwards, great poet. But she was the playmate and the foster sister of Rasulullah. So oh, look at the stages of the life of Rasulullah. He comes back, his mother goes and visits him, or visits his father's grave uh, at Abwa, uh, I mean near Medina, and on the way back, they pass away at a place called Abwa. The person who's with Rasulullah when the mother is passed and the mother is buried, one person only, Um Ayman Baraka, and she carries him to his grandfather, who dies a few months after that, and he's left in the charge of the mother of Sayyidina Ali, Fatima binti Asad. Another woman. When you receive revelation, the first person to believe in him, the first person to console him, the first person to support him, who remained loyal and compassionate, and who was the financier of the Islamic movement, Khadija bint Khuwailid. When the Prophet preached on the member in the masjid, he stood on the member and gave the message of, of Islam and of the Quran and of the words of Allah. He stood on a member was arranged for him by Fakiha al-Ansari. When the Prophet was attacked at the Battle of Uhud and people fled, seasoned fighters among the Prophets, they were outnumbered, among the companions fled because of the imminent loss. One woman stood by him. She took 13 wounds, one of them a gaping wound on her neck, life-threatening wound. She was a lady who swore an oath at the Prophet Aqaba among the 73 people of Rasulullah, will defend you with our life. And when the battle came, she went on the battlefield, physically defending the Prophet without a shield, only a sword. And that's why the Rasul said about her, مَلْ تَفَتُّ يَوْمُ أُحُدْ يَمِينًا وَلَا شِمَالًا إِلَّا وَرَآهَا تُقَاتِلْ دُونِي On the day of Uhud, I did not turn right or I did not turn left, except I saw her defending me. As a matter of fact, the first person to die for the cause of Islam, the first martyr in our history, is Sumayya bint Khayyat in the lifetime of Rasulullah. The Prophet passed away with his head on the lap of his beloved wife, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And his lineage continues, his lineage continues rather, not via any male children, but rather through the progeny of his most beloved daughter, Fatima binti Muhammad. Besides Women's Month, we are also now in the period of Hajj, and Hajr is a significant central character in the Hajj. But let me just for a moment reflect on those Hajj days that we are now in. We are now, alhamdulillah, moving towards the 12th month of the Islamic lunar calendar with the Muslim, the season of Hajj. 
and more particularly approaching the first 10 days of Zil Hijjah, which many of the ulama feel are referred to in the Quran, in the verses, wal fajri wal layali al-ashr, wal shaf'i wal watr. Some people say, and many scholars believe, these verses of Sutul Fajr make reference to the first 10 days of, of, of Zul Hijjah by the break of day and by the 10 nights. And in Sahih al Bukhari, the Rasul intimated that these are the most sacred days of the year. Like Layl al Qadr is in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, is sacred among the nights of the days of the year, the most sacred of the days, as far as days are concerned. Succession days is these ten days. And the Rasul said the hadith documented in Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari, ما من أيام الأعمل الصالح فيهن أحب الله بهذه الأيام العشر. There's no day in which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than these ten days of Zil Hijjah. Because as uh, Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani reasons, he says, why are these days the most important days? He says, the sabab fi imtiyazi عشرت الحجة لمكان اجتماع أمهات العبادة فيه وهي الصلاة والصيام وصدق والحج ولا يأتي ذلك في غيره he said in فتح الباري he writes in a شرح Imam Sahih al-Bukhari writes the reason for the excellence of these 10 days of Zul-Hijjah is that the Muslim can perform all the main kinds of worship which are salah and you can fast and you can give charity and you can perform hajj None of these can be combined at any other time of the year. In other words, you can do fasting and pray, but all of these can never be combined at any time of the year except in these days of Zul Hijjah. So when we reflect on this Hajj, we are in the season of Hajj, the Muslim of Hajj. And in the Hajj, the central figures are Ibrahim and Hajar and Ismail. And some of the essential rituals of the Hajj are memory of this Nubian Hajar. Like Ibrahim, she is a symbol of Allah consciousness. And when we run the Sa'i between Safa and Marwa, we are reenacting the running of that black slave woman. For those of us, as I always say, those who are chauvinistic, she was a woman. Those of us who are racist, she was black. And for those of us who are class conscious, she was a slave. So each every one, there can be no arrogance on any haji and shame on any haji. They come with any arrogance because Allah made you run the running of a black slave woman in two pieces of cloth. Two pieces of simple cloth. And we come back with any remembrance of arrogance. There's something seriously wrong with the hajj that you performed. She's running not for herself but for someone else, for a child, the water, the zamzam, that life, that liquid of life. And we still drink from the zamzam as we still drink from the tawheed that your husband and son brought to us. And of course, Rasulullah is of their progeny. So we are the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we are the millah of Ibrahim and Hajar and Ismail. It was sadness. As our hujjaj are now in the holy land, may Allah grant them hajj maqbool and mabroor. May Allah bring them safely, inshallah. May Allah accept all the duas that they have made. It is so sad that in the past two days there were attacks on the sacred sites. One is in, Jeru in, in um, uh, um, Jerusalem, people have been killed by mortar attacks, over 100 mortar attacks on innocent Palestinian people. And this morning we wake up to the news that Saudi Arabia has bombed a, uh, in the town of Sada, a bus was struck at the market where children in a school bus were on a field trip. 29 children have died. Altogether, 50 people were killed. 79 seriously injured. 30 of them were children under the age of 15. It's a pity. In the land of the Haram, the people who are in charge of the Haram and in charge of the other Haram, and of all the Haram, whether it be in Jerusalem or in Mecca and Medina, are not people who stand up for the principles and values which Hajar and Ibrahim and Ismail and these great ones stood for. Let me remind you of these 10 days of Zil-Hijjah and I conclude with this. The most sacred day of the year is the day of Arafah, the ninth day of Zil-Hijjah, one of the 10 days which Allah refers to. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hajj Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. If you must the Arafah, you must the Hajj. It was 1429 years ago this year that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam summarized the essential message of his mission in his historic Khutbatul Wida 
or the final sermon. Which is delivered at Mount Arafah in the Urana Valley of Mecca on the 9th of Zulhijjah, the 10th year of Hijri. And he said 12 key points which I want us to reflect upon as we think about gender roles, as we think about human equality, as we think about justice, as we think about Hajar, as we think about Ibrahim and Rasulullah, and as we think of ourselves as the Ummah of Muhammad. 12 points, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 12 points that captures the essence of his message and that summarize his mission that were narrated and related to us. And he said to those who are there, pass it on to those who are not there. And we are who are receiving are passing it on to other generations. One, submit to none but Allah. Two, do your best to uphold the pillars of the deen. Three, recognize Allah and his revelation as the primary source of your guidance. Four, acknowledge that prophets have come to guide humanity and that mission of prophets reach finality and conclusion in the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then, the need to avoid all forms of evil to the best of your capacity. The importance of fulfilling your trust and to be, acknowledged, to, to be aware of the fact or to acknowledge your individual accountability on the day of judgment. Give your trust, keep your word, you'll be held individually accountable on the day of Qiyamah. To avoid dishonesty, particularly in financial dealings. Not to forget the rights of workers. Promotion of good family relations. Acknowledging and working towards the unity of the ummah. The importance of valuing human life, of human integrity, and of human property. And finally, the need to remove racial prejudice. The need to remove racial prejudice and the promotion of the equality of humanity. All of this in the final sermon of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May we walk in the footsteps of the prophets and the path of those who perpetuate the mission and legacy of these great ones. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله. Been asked to make dua. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Salim Khan fell ill in France and is in need of a triple bypass surgery. We make dua that Allah may bring him back home safely. So for his surgery, he's coming back for his surgery. So make dua that Allah brings him. And also Yasmin Muhammad, wife of the Rafiq Muhammad of Pro Roof. Uh, she is in a, uh, ill health, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant her, inshallah, recovery as well. As we make dua for all those who are sick, may Allah grant them what is best for them. And those who, are pa who have passed on, may Allah grant them maghfirah and jannah. And those who are on hajj, may grant them hajj maqbool and mabrur, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.